Hello everybody, my name is Sarah and welcome back to Educating Adventures. Just the other day, I was watching one of my all-time favorite movies, Finding Nemo, and as I was watching those adorable orange clownfish swim all around my screen, I had a couple questions. Do clownfish really hang out with sea anemones? And could they really cross the entire ocean? Well, I think today we should take a couple minutes to find the answer to those questions and maybe even ask a couple more. Let's see what else we can learn about clownfish. Clownfish are a group of fish with about 30 different species. They're also called anemone fish and we'll talk more about why in just a little bit. All 30 species of clownfish are found in the Indo-Pacific. That's the area where the Indian Ocean meets the Pacific Ocean, kind of right between Asia and Australia. Those waters are warm and tropical and filled with coral reefs, which is typically where we find clownfish. Thanks to movies like Finding Nemo, most people picture clownfish orange and white, but they can look really different from one another. Some clownfish species are solid in color, some species are striped, some species might be black or yellow or even pink. Now let's go back to something that we said before. We said that clownfish are sometimes also called anemone fish, and the reason for that is because clownfish have a mutualistic relationship with sea anemones. Mutualistic relationships, which are also called mutualism, these are relationships or interactions between two different species, and when they interact, they both get something good from that interaction. So let's take a look at the mutualistic relationship between clownfish and sea anemones. Let's start with what the clownfish gets from the sea anemone. The main benefit that the clownfish get from the sea anemone is protection. Sea anemones are related to jellyfish and like jellyfish, they are covered in stinging cells on their tentacles. When other fish touch a sea anemone, they get stung. The clownfish does not get stung. And scientists hypothesize this is because of a thick, protective mucus that coats their entire body. So when there's danger, the clownfish can hunker down in the protection of the sea anemone. The second benefit that clownfish get from sea anemones is food. After a sea anemone eats something, the clownfish will help itself to any leftover food scraps that are left behind. Clownfish are omnivores, so they're eating everything from fish scraps to algae, worms, zooplankton, so they kind of help themselves to whatever's left over from the sea anemone. Now let's switch gears, because remember we said for this to be a mutualistic relationship, both species have to get something good. So what does the sea anemone get from the clownfish? The main thing that it gets is nutrients. When the clownfish goes to the bathroom, all of the nutrients that were in the clownfish waste get absorbed by the sea anemone. The clownfish will sometimes have little food scraps as well that the sea anemone can eat. The other thing that the sea anemone gets from the clownfish is protection. Sometimes the clownfish might chase away any potential predators to the sea anemone, but they're also going to be protecting the sea anemone from parasites. There's typically more than one clownfish living in a sea anemone because clownfish tend to be pretty social. They live in a group with other clownfish, but they have a very strict hierarchy. There is one dominant female. She's the most dominant fish in the group. She's also the biggest. There's also a dominant male who's slightly smaller than the dominant female, and the rest of the group is made up of non-dominant males. The only fish in the group that breed are the dominant male and the dominant female. Once the dominant male and female breed, the female will lay her eggs on a hard surface as close to the sea anemone as possible where they can be a little bit protected. And for about six to 10 days, those eggs are cared for primarily by the male. He fans them, he protects them from predators to make sure they're nice and safe. Eventually, those eggs hatch and the tiny undeveloped clownfish float up to the surface where they start their life feeding on plankton and drifting around. Now here's the interesting thing. All clownfish are born male. 
So eventually, those tiny male clownfish that are floating at the surface, they'll grow, they'll develop enough to come down to the ocean floor to find a sea anemone of their own. But this does raise a bit of an unusual question because we said that all clownfish group are led by one dominant female. So we need to talk about where that female comes from. Imagine for a second a group of clownfish that are living within a sea anemone, but unfortunately the dominant female clownfish, she gets eaten by a big fish. Oh no. Well, what will happen now is the dominant male in the group over the next couple weeks will change and he will become the dominant female in the group. He will develop the ability to lay eggs and the runner up, the next dominant male that was in the group, he will become the most dominant male and now those two individuals are the ones that will breed. Clownfish are not the only fish that are able to do this. Some parrotfish and some wrasses, they're able to change sex as well. Though, but for some of those fish, it's actually opposite of the clownfish. Clownfish are born male with some changing to female. For those other fish, they're born female with some changing to male. With all of that being said, I feel like we could probably all agree that clownfish are the perfect combination of absolutely adorable and incredibly fascinating. And because of this, a lot of people really like them and want them in things like home aquariums. Unfortunately, that is one of the biggest threats to clownfish is that they are poached or collected from the wild and then they are sold as part of the aquarium trade. Clownfish are also threatened by climate change. As the atmosphere gets warmer, the ocean also gets warmer. It absorbs some of that heat. It's hard for organisms like sea anemones to survive in those warmer ocean waters. And if there's no sea anemones, then there's no more clownfish. And if you'd like to learn more about the threats to clownfish, please be sure to visit our website, our conservation corner, to learn more about these threats and what you can do to help, like how to reduce your impact on climate change by using less energy and using renewable energy. And if you'd like to do even more than that, please be sure to visit our website where we have quizzes, activities, projects, and so much more. I hope you guys are feeling like clownfish expert now, and I can't wait to see you at our next adventure. Thank you very much. Goodbye.